National Telecommunication Union, ITU, is the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies, ICTs. With the help of its global membership, ITU brings the benefits of modern communication technologies to people everywhere in an efficient, safe, easy and affordable manner. Nigeria is a member country and has participated in IT programs around the globe over the years. ITU 2016 in Bangkok, Thailand, which took place from the 14th to the 17th of November 2016, was a gathering of who is who in the world of telecommunication and the Information and Communication Technology, ICT. Her Royal Highness Princess Maha Chekri Siridohon declared ITU Telecom World 2016 open in the presence of His Excellency Prayut Chan Ocha, Prime Minister of Thailand, ITU Secretary General Hulin Zhao and distinguished guests from 59 countries around the world. Opening ceremony over, it was time for real business. It was a beehive of activities at the Nigerian Pavilion at Stand 2500 Impact Exhibition Center, Bangkok, Thailand. International friends of Nigeria, including prospective investors, as well as players of the industry from Nigeria, were in attendance, including members of the National Assembly, with the Minister of Communication, Barista Adebayo Shitu, representing Nigeria's President, Muhammad Buhari. In his address of welcome, the Executive Vice Chairman and CEO of NCC, Professor Umar Garbambata, says Nigeria has all it takes to be among the Committee of Nations in view of its astronomical growth of the industry within a short time. He stated that his eight-point agenda, now in full swing, is a deliberate effort towards further advancing the course of the industry in Nigeria, particularly the expansion of broadband. At the ITU Telecoms World 2016 of Nigeria's drive to ensure ICT for all her citizens, we at the Nigerian Communications Commission have unveiled an eight-point agenda whose focus is in line with the change mantra of the government of our President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, His Excellency. The agenda is premised <coughs> on facilitating broadband penetration, improving quality of service, optimizing usage and benefits of spectrum, promoting ICT innovation and investment opportunities, facilitating strategic partnerships, protecting our consumers and empowering them, promoting fair and inclusive growth, and ensuring regulatory excellence and operational efficiency. The Secretary General of ITU, Holin Zhao, spoke on the importance of ITU to the world economy and Nigeria's leading role in Africa. Well, I'm very pleased to come here to join you. So I, when I meet you with your staff, I said I'm back now. Because uh, in the past, uh, ITU Telecom is always strongly supported by uh, Nigeria with a very big stand. It's always 350 square meters. It's one of the largest uh, stand except the host country. That uh, also 2008, 2013, when we had uh, our last telecom here, we have first lady of Nigeria here with very strong participation of not only with the stand, but with the experts, with, uh, with uh, you know, that uh, different part of the government. 
So I, I, I was looking for this opportunity to come back. Now I'm, I'm back. So very pleased to come here. I would uh, very much uh, like to invite uh, our African leaders to promote uh, locally that uh, we do think that uh, ICT is uh, very important for us. And ICT is indeed uh, very important. It's not uh, separated from uh, agriculture. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari, represented by the Minister of Communication, Barista Debayo Shitu, reiterated government's commitment to deepen the course of telecommunication and ICT industries in the quest for digital economy. I want to assure you, Mr. President, that our invitation to the outside world to come and invest in Nigeria is real and is very, very sincere. You can be sure that if it is necessary for us to provide you know, tax holidays, we will be willing to do that. All that we require is you have our arms straight out to, for you to come in and make your investments, which by the grace of God will be pro protected. There is a huge, huge opportunity for broadband and going forward, the Internet of Things, and so many opportunities. There are so many opportunities for infrastructure, for smart cities, for smart states, for smart nation. There is so much we can do, but you will not be able to see it from the data. The data is misleading. The data is wrong. We have 180 million people in Nigeria today. This will grow to 450 million by the year 2050. Nigeria will be the third largest country in the world in terms of population. These people have to talk, and Nigerians love to talk. They, need, they love to connect. The opportunities are huge, and we must all do whatever we can to get serious international companies to look in the direction of our country. We recognize, ladies and gentlemen, the immense socio-economic importance of ICT to national development and will therefore seek to ensure that the necessary infrastructure to facilitate ubiquitous broadband services is available, accessible, and affordable to all citizens of our country. I invite you to engage with delegates from Nigeria at our national pavilion where we have ensured an environment that is conducive to this engagement to dialogue and hear first-hand information from our pavilion partners of the immense investment opportunities as well as the initiatives that we have put in place to ensure that investments are protected and guaranteed quick returns on them. There were goodwill messages from sponsors and partners of Nigeria's participation and thereafter, representative of the president led other dignitaries to formally declare Nigeria's pavilion open. Another very highlight of Nigeria's pavilion during the IT World 2016 was NCC-sponsored small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, entrepreneurs and startups who were there to showcase their talents to the world. The EVC of NCC visited their stands and had an interaction with the youth. I'm trying to change the way people think about addresses. I believe that by making fiscal addresses logical, we we'll have a better world and then places will become accessible. Yeah, we've begun by creating a single number that identifies a particular address for per person. Because we believe that physical address, the challenge with physical address is that when you live in a place for a while and you moved, your physical address has changed, really. And then your bank, the banks, the government no longer know where you live because your address has changed. So information quickly becomes out of date. So by giving you one address, you, with that address, when, when you give it to the bank, to the government, or, or to whoever, whenever you change that address, everybody receives an update. Okay, actually we have innovated a device called Intelligent Security and Emergency Device. It is a device that provides ultimate security and faster emergency notification to buildings and automobiles. So it is a device that you can install at your house and also in your car. So if somebody maybe intrude your entire house, you can use that device to 
For example, you can monitor your house and see everything that is happening in your house. And at the same time, if interest, when intruder enter your house, you know that sometimes you cannot pick your phone and start calling police. But with this device, you can just click notify police. The device will call police by itself and even speak to them to tell them that your house is in need of emergency. And at the same time, take detailed information about uh, your GPS address, different data, and then send it to emergency uh, agencies so, so that they can easily navigate your house. You know, actually, this NCC platform is a great one, and I think uh, we, the only thing we can do is to appreciate them and, uh, you know, be grateful for this because this is really a huge opportunity for us to showcase ourselves, and uh, I can only say I'm grateful. It's a national system of innovation to add value, you know, to the system. Once we do that, we go a step further to link them up with other appropriate agencies of government through that strategic collaboration and partnership, you know, which is an item. Agenda, so that these innovations and entrepreneurship, you know, uh, uh, you know, we have seen new skills. The Nigeria Investment Forum, with the theme "Accelerating Investment in ICT for National Development," was attended by prospective investors and friends of Nigeria. The Nigeria Investment Forum engaged the international delegates and potential investors and highlighted investment opportunities towards the development of the nation's ICT infrastructure. Lead speaker, former ITU Secretary General, who is now the Executive Director of Smart Africa Alliance, Dr. Hamadoun Torre, could not hide his feelings of the astronomical growth of the telecommunication industry in Nigeria. When I was in ITU for five years in a row, Nigeria was ranked number one in mobile growth, five years in a row. If you are number one five times in a row, you must have done something right. You must have done something right. And of course, you cannot have those double digits growth now because you have reached 107% already penetration, and therefore the growth is no longer in numbers of subscribers. The growth will be in quality, in new services and new applications. And I see Nigeria as a giant in the continent as an opportunity to invest. The panel of discussions led by the EVC of NCC and the Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasir El Rifai did justice to the issues. I consider ICT the basic foundation of governance today. No one can govern successfully without the deployment of technologies in security, in, in, in agricultural development, and so on and so forth. Technology is an enabler that can get you do many things. You can resolve issues around corruption, fraud, governmental inefficiencies, and so on and so forth using technology. Nigerians are listening, they are spending, despite what is happening. It has been reported that Nigerians this year have spent 50 billion naira more than what they've spent, you know, in order to access, you know, telecommunication services. So Nigerians love to communicate. No matter what the difficulties, you know, we are going through, the various indices of economic growth point to the fact that the telecommunication sector has proven to be resilient, stable, and therefore contributes an average of between 3 to 4 billion naira per quarter. Representative of Nigeria's President Barisa Dibayo Shitu says the deployment and usage of telecom and ICT facilities in Nigeria are evidence that the industries have come to stay, calling on prospective foreign investors to come and be a part of the country's history. I want to assure you that all our agencies are prepared to assist and support all initiatives. We are prepared for new ideas. We are prepared to learn from you. We are prepared to listen to you. We are prepared to assist you. We are prepared to collaborate and support every endeavor. Please feel free to come to Nigeria. For us as a company, we came um, into operation in the year 2010 with a submarine cable system. But since then, we've continued to invest and won the Lagos Infraco license, um, which grants us the right to build 
um, fiber infrastructure as a wholesale provider for Lagos. The Infraco scheme, which is defined as part of the National Broadband Plan, segments the country into seven zones in which we won the first license in Lagos, and then you have seven other parts of the country, the <coughs> FCT being one of them, and then the other geopolitical zones, um, to roll out fiber so that we can actually have things like dig one policies, efficiency um, in the cost of new infrastructure, and also accelerate the rate in which services are being rolled out to match the objectives of the natural broadband plan. As part of that plan, we're building in the near term over a thousand kilometers um, in Lagos. Um, likewise, the LC, ICE, um, FCT, uh, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja has a licensee that is starting to put their plans together. And currently, um, there are requests for proposals for five additional parts of the country to deploy similar infrastructure. I think there's no better time we despite the recession and whatever is going on around the world for investments in ICT. Despite the previous successes, there still remains a lot of room and a lot of opportunity for any new investor who wishes to come into Nigeria to invest in ICT. We as a house, we, we really, really are determined to ensure that at least the government's broadband policy is adhered to and you know that there's a, a, a lot of dividend that it brings to the people. From a little over 450,000 lines by 2001, NCC managed by an experienced workforce has grown the ICT sector with a superlative result of about 152 million active lines. Now, but we have gone beyond a voice uh, because in the area of voice we have achieved a talent density of about 107%. Uh, presently, our broadband penetration at about 21 percent but then of course we are yet to even scratch the surface because in terms of the developments around the world we are uh, we're now uh, talking about internet of things and also internet of everything uh, where are we in terms of internet of things which exactly is the direction that the world is going today um, i was at um, at a forum yesterday where Japan is already talking about 5G uh, by 2025 uh, to begin to roll out uh, 5G services. So, in other words, there is a lot of action and development in different parts of the world. And that is why um, in NCC with the eight-point agenda, where you have a lot of emphasis on broadband deployment, especially in the area of uh, infrastructure, uh, we are looking at possibly even surpassing the 2018 um, um, uh, poly broadband uh, um, penetration policy of 30% by 2018. Lately, you can see that in, on, under the leadership of uh, EVC, Professor Dan Bata, you can see where technology and uh, telecommunication is moving into, which is very, very important. From here, compare last year to this year, contribution of telecommunication um, to the GDP of Nigeria is like 9%, is increasing from 1% to which I think will be going ahead. And as I've said, all, every one of us, we are, we are part of the government. Nobody's looking to run after some, anybody. We're just looking for the success of the country, success of the telecommunication industry. When you're talking about diversification from all, we are looking to diversify into the um, telecommunication industry as well, looking to provide more employment opportunities for our team in youth, which is very, very important. National Assembly is committed and ready to work with the uh, tele communication companies in Nigeria to invest more in Nigeria to amend and uh, to act to bring any policy that will enhance the telecommunication sector. I believe strongly that we have teaming youth that uh, form quite a large percentage of the population who are ICT alert and aware and giving proper infrastructure, ICT infrastructure, they can latch onto it and, and, and have various business spin-offs and, and open up a plethora of, of opportunities for growth for the country. Year 2001 served as a watershed for the NCC after digital mobile license DML auction. 
investments began to flow in in high torrents. Sectoral reforms began. Investments grew from $50 million by that year to about $35 billion in 2016. Now everyone has forgotten the history and the struggles and benefiting from this and Nigeria has done very well. Nigeria has become Africa's largest telecoms market. Uh, we have led the world in the growth of vo the voice market. But the technology is evolving and there are new frontiers to conquer. The next big thing uh, in telecoms is the broadband. is to ensure that every Nigerian has 4G access to the internet. Because through that you can expand knowledge, you can improve healthcare, you can even improve agriculture. NCC Director of Public Affairs, Mr. Tony Ojobo, described Nigeria's participation at the ITU World 2016 as tremendously rewarding. That ITU is looking at ICT serving the people. Now, and there is also a new thinking, you know, in terms of infrastructure development. Now, and that's why this theme is emphasizing on collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Now, the new thinking is that for infrastructure deployment, the PPP model is what is being encouraged. And the reason is because there is a huge capital requirement for deployment of infrastructure. And so what is being advocated, you know, even in this particular ITU summit, is the PPP model where governments and then private sector come together to ensure that there is infrastructure provided that will provide services to the people. Is that infrastructure exists internationally to support uh, Nigeria moving towards the new digital age. And uh, there's always um, all, all types of support that's available from the International Telecommunication Union, from all the different countries that are looking for uh, for us to be able to meet with them and, and we have been going from boot to boot here yeah? and a lot of them have come and said to do business with us and uh, I think that this is a whole opportunity that is open to us for us to exploit. The importance of this forum is to see what standards, what policies, what innovation, what technology has now become in 2016. So when we gather here and discuss smart solutions, digital solutions, how do we come up with what can help economic growth within Nigeria and the sub-region, and of course by extension Africa as a whole. So when we come to such forums, there's a lot to take back. And already we're taking back so much as you can see. Uh, actually, we are very much impressed the way the ITC organized this pavilion in this uh, Thailand uh, uh, visit, of which we are very much encouraged and we are a member of the committee. Hence, we appreciate the effort of SCC because Nigerian, we are now having an assessing with regard to lack of financial uh, backing for the government to run some of the appears, especially the budget and what have you. Now, uh, with this development, uh, the NCC can attract, uh, you know, uh, investors, outside investors to go and invest in Nigeria so that uh, we can be able to cover this drop of uh, petroleum due to the revenue falling down. With these investors will come into Nigeria to invest. So Nigeria is starting to benefit a lot of things from it. And the, and the experiences that the companies we have from all these uh, sessions that we are, an interactive session that is going on in uh, Thailand. Uh, it's a very important event. Uh, we meet people, we discuss with them, we look at areas of collaboration, we invite potential investors and many more. So I feel we benefited from sharing our experience with others, inviting potential investors and trying to learn from their experience and seek for collaboration. I think it's value for money. At least when you get here, you can see Nigeria stand is, is very, very significant and it stands out out of every other um, stand, which is what we think we should be doing. Nigeria, through NCC, went to ITU World 2016 in Bangkok, Thailand with the watchword, Smart Communities, Key to a Digital Nigeria. It can then be said that NCC went, saw and conquered 
Looking forward to the 2017 edition of the ITU World. Music